Oh, there we go. Just, just the UI uh, just glitch. Overlay. I remember so as well, I, I believe if I remember correctly from the veto process, they are going to get a restart, by the way, um, ah. that SK chose to start T-side. Actually, no, they're not. No, okay. no, they're ready. All right, they're good to go. Slight confusion here. That's, uh, again, the smoke and the, and the Molotov here on the, on the SK side. They've been really loving this. Yeah, I mean, they really have. And we've seen them put it to good use on Cobble. We'll see if they can do it here on Inferno. The interesting thing to note about this is obviously Bomb 9 stacking up towards that A bomb site. The tough part is that one player over at D, Stewie, is so far back into the bomb site, there's no chance of rotating in to help him. The stop has got to really come here. They've got to do damage here at the A bomb site when SK tries to take top mid. Smoke is going to be in towards Archway. Very common indeed. Flashbang is over, and the Glocks trying to see if they can make their way through somehow. Tarek picking up a quick double headshot, automatic, following in and taking down Cold Zero. A great start to the round here for Cloud9. They just have to hold on. And Stewie, I think, smartly falling back, saying, all right, a five versus two retake. We can manage that. They may be good, but they can't hold back against that much force. And they get the bomb down, SK. That's a bit of a win, but these Glocks should be nowhere near enough. Taco up on the coffins. Deep Molotov comes in. Phelps has gone down and now they're all around. They're gonna completely drown him in Cloud9 players. Taco zoned out and out of time and everything else. They're gonna go for the knife kills, in fact. Oh my Ooh. god, it's a bit of a bloodbath. He's getting more headshots and finally he's stabbed. I was wondering if it was worth it to throw that many bodies at him, get the knife, but I think just to get the crowd into it, it might have done the job. $1,500 bonus money as well is going to be very nice. But SK, they're going to go aggressive. They've done this before. Surprise purchases at weird times. This one is an AK dropped over to Fallen. It's not that unusual. We see it from time to time. But it's a big investment early on. Remember, if you just save into this round, you can have four or five players with AKs into the next one, but they want to catch Cloud9 off guard. It doesn't really look like that's going to happen. We've got two M4s, two UMPs, and a scout here. I mean, that, that's a pretty ready buy coming out of Cloud9. All it takes is one kill to force a rotation to create a gap somewhere that SK can exploit, and they've shown they know how to do it tactically time and time again. Not the most utility on the CT side. Very passive from SK. Flash over, they want to clear out bananas, and Bullets ringing out right at the corner. Another smoke in its place. They've neutralized the AK for a good amount of time, just passing one minute left in this round. Frustration here for the Brazilian side, not being able to find an easy fight. See how patient they can be. Eventually, they'll have to make up their minds. Obviously, there's a good flashbang forcing back Stewie on the wall. And Automatic was trying to rotate out, but he's going to be back at Phelps picking up. It's a big kill taking down Stewie. She said, just one of them to force the rotation. If you look at the minimap, Moses, two of them running out of the A bomb site, so you're dead on. That's going to leave just one person in A right now. Oh my. This is a problem. It might be too much to handle. They haven't rotated him back either. He's coming back now, but there's not going to be time. Rush has got to hold on. They're going to clear this out. They're wrapping on him from two different angles. He's in a lot of trouble. He just needs to get one or two kills by as much time. There it is! Rush going for a third, not able to, but reinforcements are here. It's Terrence next up, and he's going to close it out. He shuts down this hit somehow, miraculously. And Cold Terrence just got to run now. He can't die after the timer. What a hold from Rush! With just a single UMP, that is definitely not easy. He has no idea if there's going to be more coming. He's, he's constantly checking for that other arm of the flank, and it doesn't come. He, oh, he stays alive just long enough for Terry to get in and get these two kills as well. That's, Very well done. That's so unreal that he's able to hold off in that situation. What a huge performance. I mean, it's going to go unnoticed in the frags and in the context of that round, but Cold Zera doesn't get any bonus money. He has CZ, but he's got no money. He's got zero dollars. Phelps aggressive behind this wall with the P250 as well. He opened things up in the last round for SK Gaming, almost forced massive rotations. And there's the kill. Not going to happen twice. So as we were saying, a risk for SK Gaming to buy that early AK-47. 
They had everything planned out. They got the kill on the other side. They forced the rotation. But now they've been grinded to a halt here, and it's just going to be a bit of a shooting gallery as Cloud9 can easily pick up some of these kills. So as a start to this map, which is not always easy to play on the CT side. No, I mean, it's very good. If you get in the tough economic situation, you're just almost done with. Great double kill from Tarek. Don't lose the weapon. He gets a third, a fourth in the round. That's going to get things started nicely. Cloud9 with a 3-0 lead, but now it's going to begin. Now the test begins. SK is going to have weapons, but Cold, like we said, because he survived that one round entirely, just played the clock out, he's going to be stuck on a CZ again. That's You've got to appreciate that if you're Cloud9, not having you know one last round where Cold Zero has an AK. Set 75, definitely a good, good weapon, but... Um want everything to try and turn this around quickly for the American side or the North American side can pick up too much money. A lot of damage there just from the grenades. Flashbang is in. That would have been a great time for Phelps to peek, but he's not quite sure. I think he's listening to try and see if he can hear what's happening on the other side of that wall. He's trying to find a timing that he can exploit when, yeah, when he gets that information to swing around, maybe with a pop flash sometime in the future. At the moment, maybe just setting it up. I think maybe also having 30 HP is kind of Made him nervous. He passes the AK over to Cold Zera. There's a nade into that B bomb site as the defense has gone passive. Not a whole lot to use for SK. They've got one flashbang, but they've got four smokes. They can set up a really, really strong wall, blocking vision, blocking information from Cloud9 over towards A. Yeah, the one problem is. They won't have any grenades for the after pump. Yep. That's always worth watching out for. If they have to use the last of them to even get on the bomb site, then the retake is going to be that much easier, especially on the A bomb site for this particular one. It's contagious. It's caught on. There's a Molotov into the choke point. That's going to force him away. Now only two smokes for SK and a flashbang. Skadoodle going to go for a peek. Once information, it's not there. And I think he feels, because he hasn't seen anything towards A, that he should rotate over towards B, but that's the wrong call. Here comes the hit-up lane. Surely they hear these footsteps. Skadoodle is committed to the B bomb site. Terra can rush again. It's got to be a stronghold. The first kill. When does Rush peak? Just now, he's taken out. He's traded. Terra on top, looking over the smoke. It's one more. It's going to be a three on two, but Phelps has slipped in. He's found a crack. And he's holding them at bay at the moment. Cloud9 must deal with him, and they do find him in the end. Everything rides on Taco. There's the one smoke that he managed to pick up, and now he has to hold this on his own. He knows where both of them are. They definitely know that much. Down in the pit could be very dangerous. Just his head is going to be showing. They have a kit on either player. Cloud9, if they can win this round, that's going to be very tough on SK. Now they're rushing in, turning around for the flashbang. Great timing there for Taco. And waiting, there's almost no time left. He's just hiding. He's just waiting. With two seconds left, he's going to be standing up, getting the headshot on one. And that might have been absolutely perfect. Taco getting the quad kill and saving the round. Brilliant play. And he's earned it. Shoot the body. Some classic BM there. And Taco silences everything. Cloud9 never clearing that out. So, so difficult. That smoke buying him time to get into a great post-plant situation. You have to say, though, I mean, Phelps making a play. 38 feet from the start of the round, being able to slip in towards CT spawn. Since that slows everything down, again, just, just buying Taco more and more time. Double AWP seems to be the answer here for Cloud9. A lot of fire laid at the feet of Stewie. Uh, he's not going to be all that scared, even if they are more or less on the other side of the wall there. So that's an upsetting round to lose for Cloud9. They probably thought they could easily retake that against Taco, but he just played it to perfection. He really did. He used the bomb as a teammate. That was quite nice. Knows as long as he doesn't show himself too early. If he had peaked earlier, it would have had to been an immediate headshot. So great win from Taco. One AWP towards the B-bomb site, the other is lane side. Skadoodle, a quiet game on Cobble. They're going to need him here on Inferno. It's a tough spot for an opera to get multiple kills. All yeah. tops and smokes ringing out from both sides to slow things down. There are so many good grenades now you can throw to Skadoodle's position. None of them seems like they're going to be used in this round for SK. You have to throw them from that balcony on the 
second mid, so no one setting up for that right now. 38 seconds. And this is going to be incredibly explosive. Once they go, they're going to be all in, running through the fire. They had no chance. Skadoodle's still going to go down, and somehow Rush has stayed alive for a little bit longer. Pistol's out, but Cold Zero is going to catch him in that corner. Now, it's four versus two, but Taco and Cold Zero are low. I'm not sure if Cloud9 can do this. They're going to have to just back off. Yeah, they, they might not even have the info. They have to save. Uh, yeah, it might not even, I don't even think it matters if they have the info because at this point, with so much time in the post plant, one HP doesn't matter if you're in a good position to, to work with your teammates. That's a great hit. And that's all Taco jumping out through the Molotov as well, timed perfectly with the flashbang. Rush almost completes the kill, but Taco's able to take out Skadoodle in lane, and that's what allows the waterfall, SK Gaming, to just overrun that site. It's a beautifully planned, beautifully coordinated hit. Trying to save the weapon, he's going to be traded out. I mean, that's that's just uh, adding insult to injury there towards the end. At least you want to save the rifles if you can. Stewie going to be able to save the AWP at least, so... Couple of really rough rounds coming in here for Cloud9. SK on the other hand, straight back in it. Taco with 123 ADR. Yeah, that's brilliant. Eight and four to start this game off. His nearest it's teammate is Phelps at three. Tarek has got 10, 3, and he's got... That can't be real. 227 ADR. I mean, I know it's early on, but... You also know it's the Tarek hero. That is very true. I mean, now is, would be the perfect time for it to, to peak, wouldn't it? The crazy thing is... Oh, oh that's uh, not ideal. Stewie's got the AWP. And normally you'd think, obviously, of Skadoodle as the offer for Cloud9, but Stewie with this weapon is probably the guy you want to be holding on to it if he's the only weapon you have on your team. Such a playmaker, such a game changer. He loves being aggressive, he loves taking risks. And you're going to need both of those things if you want this off to turn the round in the favor of Cloud9. Small stack on the B-bomb site. With, with just pistols, it's hard to imagine that that is even going to turn out. And SKR still fishing for any information that they can get, making sure you don't run into a stack is obviously very important. And by the time they do execute on the bomb side, if they do, it's going to involve a lot of grenades, which means some of these players can't just stand where they are. They're definitely going to be moved back. Stewie had that angle for a long time, but just the utility used over towards the B bomb site forces him to kind of start to cheat and rotate. He's changed his mind halfway there. It's an indication that Cloud9 has no clue what's happening in this round so far. Again, another position that's difficult to string kills on the board. Utility is going to force him away. Here they are, probing into the stack. Phelps gets one. He's not going to get the second. Now the hit starts to come in towards the A bomb site. Stewie is still here. There's still a chance. Fur's going to walk right into it. The time is a double. He's done it. Stewie's created a chance. Absolutely unbelievable. Tuck of Terry coming through, and he's going to get the kill on Fur. Out of all the possible positions, he finds himself lined up for a double kill. Fallen has no head armor, so one bullet. That was all it took. I thought when he, I thought when he looked away from the apartments, that was you it. You thought it was done. I, you were so worried when you see him start to look away, that outline creeping closer. And by, just by a stroke of luck, Cloud9 up four to two now. Double up is back in their hands. A change of fortunes. What a ridiculous turnaround. 4-2. And the seventh round is coming up. SK Gaming, kind of what they did on Cobblestone. They really don't want to sort of cede the territory here to Cloud9. They want to keep the pressure up. They know their economy is not that great. If they can just get a good round in here, then that will be all they need. They're, they're slow playing some of these rounds as well, which is why you're seeing, if you look over at the utility of Cloud9, they're not using too much early on because they, they haven't really felt too pressured by, by the early round aggression from SK. At some point, you have to imagine SK is going to switch that up. But for the moment, Cloud9 is safe, sitting back. They've got a good read on this situation as well. Four players here towards A. Stewie peering down Banana with the AWP at B. Another attempt at mid control coming out. Nades are going to ring. Great nades on a taco and cold zero. Bring him down to about half. Automatic comes through the smoke. We can find nothing. Perhaps a small blunder. Terex up next. They line up for him as well. He's traded. 
So many people on this bomb side for Cloud9. There's just more and more all the time. There's Skadoodle getting a critical kill and still in the pit waiting his rush. Are they going to realize there's one more person still in the bomb side? And actually, the only one left, the bomb is going to be planted, but this is very odd. There's the headshot taking down Fur. 12 have left, and somehow SK have made their way on into the stack, beaten everyone with minimal equipment. What an unlikely round here. And Rush has to hope that someone's going to walk in so he can get an easy headshot. This is an this is insane round coming out of SK Gaming. And he's going to get shot down from Cold Sierra. I, I'm not sure I can explain exactly how they managed to win that round. It was a great stack, a great read. They have four players there trusting Stu with the up over towards B, but it's really, really poor fight selection. Automatic jumping through that smoke. That would have been fine if it was better coordinated with Tarek coming from lane side, but he tries to recover and get involved too late. And he's all alone as well, only getting one kill. Great trades from SK. And Rush is pretty much neutralized here. He's smoked off, he's blinded. They need to do a better job of taking those fights in positions where there can be a crossfire. Calculated risk from SK Gaming. Buying rifles in that last round and continuing the pressure. It works out beautifully now. Cloud9 are going to answer back in exactly the same style. So now we have sort of a war of attrition here. Nobody wants to give up. Everybody has to keep buying. And usually when this happens, the first team to win two consecutive rounds is going to have a big lead. And, and usually it's, it's way, way more dangerous for the CT side, obviously, because things get more yes. expensive. The rifle, the M4 is more expensive. You need the kits. And if you lose this round, if you're Cloud9, you've just delayed longer when you need to double save. So it just allows SK to pile on so many rounds. Cloud9, a lot of these rounds choosing to fight for this bracket control at the top of mid. We see a lot of teams choose not to do that, not wanting to stick around here as the CT team, but they're taking the risks to mixed effect. There's a flash bang up, there's a kill, there's the bomb drop as well. Tarek gets aggressive, finds one more. Rush drops down, it's the wrong moment. Tarek swings out wider and gets another. He's everywhere in this round, they just couldn't stop him, but a big missed shot there. Skadoodle has to get that, the bomb still goes down. And that leaves Cold Zero. One versus two, missed opportunity there, jumps to try and bait out the shot, and Tarek is there, closing it out with a quad kill. Two kills in Boiler, picking up the AK, swapping back into second mid for the triple. This is absolutely nuts. Tarek's had a long career, but certainly this past year, he's grown into the star he was meant to be. This is an incredible performance on the biggest stage. Semi-finals for him, trying to make it into the grand finals. 16 kills, 200 ADR, going into the ninth round. What did he do on the SK side? That was, again, a risk taken by Cloud9. It did work out. Looks like they're going to be purchasing even more, including... Listen, they, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be another risky buy, to be fair, but they know getting three kills that round, the money is still not great on Cloud9. So still choosing to risk it because they know they can still punish that, and it, it would be huge if they're able to do it. But if Cloud9 is able to hold out on one more buy, if they can stop this round from SK, they're going to be sitting quite nice to go into later stages of this first half. Standard Molotov to try and control top banana if you can. A follow up as well might be unnecessary, but um, seems like Cloud9 were expecting some sort of banana rush. They at least have three people here. Skadoodle making a bit of noise with the AWP. Flashbang, are they gonna go for the peak? Not quite. So many people on the other side, and if they rush down around this, they might not get what they're expecting. There's a shot through the wall, and close range is automatic with the MP9. Shutting down a couple, and S3 lining up the kills. Four in a row, just like that. You said it, they were not expecting it whatsoever. They expected an AWP and an MP9, and they got Stewie with the AK. He's tired of letting Automatic do all the work. They line up for him. And a great call, showing different looks on the defense. And Stewie's trying to energize this crowd, get him back into it. Six to three. Finally, there's the consecutive rounds. 
the economy broken for the Brazilian side. And now Cloud9 have a real chance of making this work. Tarek is having himself an absolute party here in the middle. Finally going to be shut down from Cold Zero, but you can tell he was loving it. Going to be another kill from Taco. So some unnecessary deaths here, but they're hunting for the kills. And Taco's going to be going down 7-3. This is a good lead here for the CT side. Still he returning the favor, but because he did that, he's not able to switch out for an M4. Small thing to note. Could come back to bite him. But listen, there's no unnecessary deaths when you're rushing mid at an anti-eco. That is pure shock and awe. What a game he's having. Could well, it not have picked a bit of time to come alive? No, he really couldn't have. Third map of a semi-final in the major. Now they're going up against fully AK'd SK. This might be that change of pace. It looks like they're speeding things up into alt mid. They slow it down. They know there's been pressure at top mid. They know they've faced opposition in brackets. Got to be careful of an aggressive peak from C9. Again, skidded a lot towards lane with that AWP. But if you're SK, you've seen double off setups. You've seen three-man stacks at top banana. You've seen four-man stacks at A. Do you know what you're going against here? Smokes go towards Archway. If they had wrapped Arch instead, it might have been even better for this kind of setup. Skadoodle, very uncomfortable, but he still picks up a kill. Maybe should have been a bit better. Tarek gonna pick up the AWB instead. Is he really gonna go back for that on 13 health? That seems impossible, and Fallen will punish him for sticking around. Takes him down for a double. There's a shot from Stewie. Felt trying to sneak through. Turning his back on Rush is never a good idea. And a little bit sloppy for SK Gaming. They had the 3v3, they had the 50 yeah. seconds. I'm not sure why they wanted to push all over the map, but now it's on Fallen here. He has to get an ace clutch to try and figure this one out. And if anyone could, it just might be him. On the bomb side itself is Rush, so that's going to be the first obstacle. 23 seconds, and somehow Automatic is knocked on the other side. Somehow this is actually doable. He spots it out, misses the shot, and now everybody's gonna come in. It's on a timer. He has to go very quick. Not sure about the pit. 10 seconds left here. Fallen is gonna go down to Rush. Such smart play from Rush, buying time around that box. Not letting Fallen get a clean kill. Close it on the end. You're right. I mean, it is a bit strange, SK choosing. I mean, three players across the map. They had time to kind of get together and coordinate something. But Phelps goes through smoke at B. Taco goes through smoke in, in the apartments. Some easy kills there for Cloud9. I think Tarek might be feeling it at the moment with that play, going back for more when he's got 13 HP, but you can't fault him too much. Back onto pistols is SK. Ooh, deep grenade in the middle. That's a lot of damage on the Phelps. Won't be recovering anytime soon. I can guarantee you when SK picked to be on the T side of this map, this wasn't what they were hoping for. The panel did bring it up, maybe not their strongest map, but in fact, Skidoodle gonna be taking down one. Great run down there for Phelps. Getting the perfect peek in to get the kill. Now they have CT spawn. What do they do with it? This is the awkward place because they have CT spawn and they have an AWP. So if you're a player at B for Cloud9, you're so scared to rotate. This is the god tier play. This is the move that's gonna save this round or prevent danger for Cloud9. Automatic is in such a good position to do so many things, prevent anyone falling back, get a quick flank. He's got to find the time. I don't think first saw whatsoever. He's looking the other way. There's the kill. There's the bomb down, picking up one more. They've avoided danger so far, but Fallen still has that AWP, and he hasn't gotten involved yet. As Soon as you see that bomb, the game is up. Tarek again. A rush to close it out. One more round on the board. One step closer to making the grand finals. This is really good Counter Strike being played from Cloud9. Knowing with the man down, they don't have all the control they'd like. Players across the map just freezing, watching a spot, knowing it's Automatic's turn to make a play with that flank, giving him the time necessary. He gets the job done, and then everyone pounces at the end. Kind of three. Losing bonus building up as well, so you're gonna see the AKs come out. They've got all the money. 
They've got a tactical timeout as well, trying to figure things out, fighting for any of these last three rounds. And what you just heard was the group of SK fans getting drowned out by this Boston crowd. They don't want to let their team hear them. They've got to make sure all the momentum is still on the Cloud9 side here. It's 13th round, and now the money's really built up here on CT side. SK, they've got to figure this one out. Phelps using his utility. He's been getting into aggressive positions, but they haven't always paid off. He hasn't been able to create a whole lot of it in these past five rounds or so. SK, this is going to be a quicker round. They don't want to draw the, the clock down. They want to hit this bomb site right now. Yes, they do. All they need is one good flashbang to set it up. Tarek ready with the counter. Taco jumping in. It's absolutely perfect. But Tarek shutting it down, still alive. And rush down to the pit, trying for a bit more. It's a double kill. Can they get out? The Molotov pushing through, but fallen. One versus two. And down a half health, putting the bomb down. Not even going to make it through. Cloud9 had that on lockdown. That was a play that earlier worked for SK. Taco staring into the ground for a flashbang, jumping out towards lane. It works again this time. He gets Skadoodle, but nothing from there. Rush gets blinded again, but he finds the kill. Tarek on top of it, and they just hold out long enough. Cold Zera at the end. You won't see that mistake too often, messing up the Molotov. Fallen taking some unnecessary damage, but it was a tall order anyways. And Cold Sierra couldn't actually join that first push because Tarek threw the mob, the flashbang. Before Tarek's kill, he actually flashed Cold Sierra so he couldn't join Taco out of that uh, balcony. So that's a very good play from him. Might have gone unnoticed. 10 3 in the 14th round here. This is. This is where they need to focus Cloud9. They can start to taste the victory, but they need to follow through. This is where, in the past, North American teams have kind of collapsed with their inexperience. You're exactly right. SK Gaming haven't been able to find much success towards the A bomb site. I mean, they haven't been able to find much success towards the B bomb site either recently, so changing things up a little bit. More emphasis towards Banana. Phelps is primed and ready to go. Two smokes and a decoy for SK, and that's all they have to win this round. How do you even do that? Better be one hell of a decoy. <laughs> there we go. You need, especially if it's B, you need Molotovs to clear out the most likely corners. Because, because Skadoodle is playing so aggressively, he actually just falls back, so this might actually pull a rotation, but if he was playing aggressively, he'd have the info of what's coming. He's smoked off now. There are three players at B for Cloud9. Oh, is Tarek gonna stick around? If they had a Molotov for that back, B bot stack there, they could easily clear it out. But the lack of grenades, they might not be able to do anything about this boost. It's gonna get really rough here at the B bomb side with 20 seconds left. SSK try and make a final push to see if they can get a couple of more rounds to the board here. Phelps taking down Stewie is one hell of a start, but now can they clear it off the back here? Spray coming in as Tarek gets a long range kill, denying the bomb plan is automatic, and there's no time. They can't win the round, it doesn't matter what happens anymore. One second, and it will be round number 11 on the board for Cloud9. Automatic hunting, and what a way to lose a round, Moses. Again, just intelligence from Automatic, that's what he brings to this team. Such a smart player, understanding the time. His teammate falls, you know, Tarek is being a distraction for him out in the open. The fact that Tarek is taking this fight, they think the site's all clear because they already killed one, so great job from Automatic. And that three-player stack towards B works out in the end. Not how they designed it, but it still works. Weren't expecting that final man on the bomb site. How could they? Skadoodle ready for that kill. Final round on the half here. Taking down Fallen mid-air. Did not even touch the ground before he was dead. Ooh, Dink on a skedoodle through the wall, but he gets the tag back and Tarek finishes it off. Who else? He has been absolutely everywhere on this map. Here's Phelps trying to peer into the B bomb site, trying to get a pick, trying to do something for SK. And Automatic times it perfectly. He's focused on Stewie and Automatic comes from the side. Shut down across the board is SK Gaming.
Taco and Cole, and you can tell they're out of rhythm, not quite able to find any other timings you normally see out of this team. Yeah, that is going to be frustrating for Taco right at the end. And Cole Zero, he's an amazing player, not much to do. And Automatic shuts him down with the first shot. Another incredible half for Cloud9. They're up 12 to 3. The crowd appreciating this Cloud9 lineup that Jack has put together. So close to victory. 12 3 here for the first half. We are looking again for another insane comeback here, and they did not manage to do it on Mirage. They had such a poor first half SK gaming, and they couldn't survive it. Four you, rounds, Moses. You go back to that first half, remember that economic battle going back and forth, neither team wanting to give it up. Cloud9 wins it out, and SK gets nothing from those traded rounds. Four rounds, as you said, to make it into the grand finals. FaZe is watching. FaZe waits them. Does SK have another comeback left in the tank? It's been a long day for them. Three players of utility on the Cloud9 side. So this is going to be a bit more measured and tactical than from what we've seen in their pistol rounds throughout this event. Final half coming in here. 12-3, the scoreline, Cloud9. Four rounds away from making the grand finals here at the Major, which would be historic. They have so much utility. I've never seen anything like this. Three sets of smokes right now and a lot of grenades. They're probably hoping to just kill all of SK before they can even be unflashed. Let's see how this works out. This is, a, this is kind of old. Very bold, especially because they're, they're fortunate SK is not more aggressive. They were able to take one of those players down. The strat's broken up. Here it comes. Phelps in the smoke. He's been bypassed. He's going to ignore it. He's going to flank around. There's Rush with the kill. But all the dangerous Phelps. Now he pounces. He gets his one kill and his second. Automatic comes back to find him, but the bomb is dropped. Switching over to the USB. Automatic's going to get it planted. Two versus two. About 40 seconds left. The bomb will be going down. There is a kit picked up on Fallen, so they have some time to work with here. SK Gaming, the maximum amount of focus is needed, and Fur will get a headshot on Automatic. Just Tarek in the pit, looking for one crossing kill. Now they're on the site, and he's in a lot of trouble down here. Working out wide, but he's on 10 health, and Fur will shut him down. It will be the round here for SK Gaming. In the corner, they're going to find the bomb. That was an absolute must-win round and they make it. That had to have been a stunning shot on the automatic inside of the bomb site. Wasn't able to lure him. This is a great play from Phelps. The play through, he ignores automatic. He knows he ran through in mid, through the smoke, and able to get that second kill just before he goes down. That's the critical one, and Fur's here to finish things off. Great, great retake. And Tarek knows that was an opportunity to pretty much close out this match right at the start. They're going to buy into this, though. With such a big lead, this is risky. This can almost be considered ill-advised, but we'll see what they do with it. Tarek with an AK, Stewie with an AK. Deagles in utility, upgraded pistols surround it. Yeah, Mr. Greer is not happy right now. Not loving it at all. Make a bit of a jump up. This has worked out an enormous amount of time just on Inferno for both teams. So maybe that's what they're thinking is, listen, we're going to play this game as well on the T-Town. And SK most certainly did. Didn't work out well for him, though, which no. is why this can be so dangerous. The AK is leading the way up mid. They just want this one kill. There it is. No response from Lane, and Cold Zero backs away as fast as possible. They don't need to commit to anything right now. They got the opening. They got plenty of time. They still have two smokes left. Everything is available to them right now. I think right now they're testing the mentality for SK. They're hitting the pause button. They know there's usually some kind of a response. Where does SK decide to get aggressive to regain map control, to regain information? They're trying to see what comes, what the reaction is, and SK is not fighting quite yet. They have picked the absolute perfect point of attack. Taco doesn't know it yet, but this is horrifying. They're coming in from every angle, shooting him in the back. He's gone. 
before he even gets a chance to get on the radio and call for backup. It's too late. They have to get out. Another round for Cloud9. And this is the only chance SK has to stay alive in the match. Save these weapons. Save the M4s. Save the utility. Bring him into the next round. You can still scrap something together. But those chances are dwindling. One big kill to open it up with. That's all they needed. And they're all gonna escape. Just a skadoodle, a little bit paranoid. You can see him on the mini-map making sure that no one's ninja defusing the bomb out of all the ways you could lose around. That was that was the one thing you didn't want. Yeah, you that would be, seeing that. That would be instant tilt in a situation where you cannot afford that. 13 to 4. This is a great entry from Stewie and Terra coming up mid. Some team damage, and then yeah, obviously Taco, no teammates, taking a big, big risk, and it doesn't pan out, and that says it all. They're feeding on his sadness. No other way to put it is there. Thirteen to four. Cloud Nine, three rounds away now from making it into the grand finals. You saw Rain already saying they love to meet Cloud9 against this home team and against the arena. Could be very interesting. A buy from SK Gaming. I mean, what else can they do? Yeah, they have to go for it. They can't drop two, so you're going to have... It's not the best of buys, obviously. It's everything they can scrounge together. It's still formidable. They're going to have two M4s, three UMPs, plenty of utility. They've got kits as well but they cannot afford to lose this. If they lose this round, they're, they're in that cycle of just, for, of just forced by every single round what you can. Try and make a miracle happen. Quick, take a banana. Very common with that monitor. We saw it pretty much all throughout the first half. As soon as you can afford it, you want to limit the CTs. And then you just do it in stages. Consecutive Molotovs being thrown, forcing them back. And once you have control, that is pretty much it. Look at the confidence they have taking these peaks. Stewie's trying to force them to use a smoke. Oh, what a shot! In response to the dink, Burr goes down. Stewie looked like he wanted to press the issue. Fallen punishes him. Spraying through the smoke with low HP. The equalizer is found. But still a dangerous position for SK. They're going to have to find a way to fill the gaps in this defense. Still two UMPs and two M4s in their arsenal. Hiding in that little corner is a very common strat. If anyone from the SK side wanted to retake top banana late, then that one position is going to be so valuable. And even if they don't, if they want to come back to B, they just know they don't have to use any more grenades to get it back. So it works for a lot of different reasons. 40 seconds, Moses. And oh, the timing is almost perfect. But Fallen going to hold strong on the bomb site. Now he needs backup desperately. And there is a little bit coming in. Trying to see if he can get Phelps in position at the right time. Skadoodle trying to run him down. Continues to spray and gets the headshot, shutting down Fallen. Automatic creeping close. That's only 23 seconds, and they are being circled in from every angle. This is not a good position for Cloud9. Very tough to get out of this one alive. Deep Molotov to try and force it back, and they're gonna have to hold on for a long time. Automatic needs a new position. He needs to get out of there. He's trying to find it. He's gonna stick around. If Phelps swings wide, he's got very limited mobility. He's gotta rely a lot on Rush. There's the flashbang. Here comes the retake. Rush is forced back into the corner. Automatic goes down to the side. No! He wins it anyways, jumping over. They know exactly where Rush is. It's gotta be heroics, and it's not gonna happen. Taco slides out. Huge win coming in. Taco with the double kill, and Fallen obviously almost got caught there. Did make it work, and overall, that was about as close as it could get for SK Gaming, but they make it work. Still, maybe could go for a bit of an improvised buy here out of Cloud9. Not sure I would recommend it, but... I mean, it's, it's the similar situation. It's gonna be deja vu to the last half. They know the money's low. Keep trying to punish that. Keep grinding it down as low as possible. Don't let SK build up some massive bank to avoid having to play against Fallen's AWP on this map at all costs. Oh no, they're gonna do it. They're gonna go for it. Molotov out. 
Derek runs right through it. It's extinguished. Are they ready? That nade is going to be huge. Stewie goes down. Fur continuing to tear, but they're both forced back. Cloud9 cannot stop now. They have to get into this site. It's all on this, and they're all blind. Skadoodle is down. This defense is holding strong. It's poised, and Cloud9 finds no openings. Great grenade users coming out of SK here, shutting it all down, making sure they could not get the kills they needed. Now the bomb is going to be planted. I guess that's a slight bonus here for the T side, but I'm not sure it's really worth it. Rush on 16 health, automatic. He's got armor and a Molotov, but again, this is more than just a dream right now. They're both stuck in the back. Taco has a Molotov. If he comes through with one good grenade here, it is all going to be over. Trying to be a bit forward, going for the spray, and he's already gone now. Automatic in the corner, and he's shut down. Fallen picking it up, continuing the series here, making it a sixth round for SK Gaming. Close, but not close enough. This is such a brilliant stop to this rush. Cloud9 actually gets through the Molotov without taking too much damage. These flashbangs are so beautiful. Buying a lot of time for Fur to recover, get another kill, deal damage, rotate into the site. And Cloud9's gonna have to sit around out again. Much like the last half, the CT side holds strong in that ec economic tug of war. And this could start the comeback. The money is gonna start building up. Not a whole lot of toys for Cloud9 to play with in this round. It isn't. Gap is still very wide, but as we talked about, closing out games, it is an art all of its own. Something that's, especially at this level, how do you, you have to sort of get to this level and then have close games and then learn how to keep your cool even at the end. Throughout even a long career for some of these players, you're not gonna get many chances to test yourself in this environment. Back towards the A bomb site for SK. Waiting for the hit. There's the pop flash up mid. No one's caught off guard. Phelps is hiding. Furs here as well. A one two punch, a bait and switch, whatever you want to call it, it's working. And it's shutting everything down. Tarek gets one, but it's not enough. Skadoodle still has his smoke, but no chance to deploy it. Now you can feel it, Andrews. Now you can feel. Everyone getting a little bit nervous. Yes, you can. The focus in Fallen's eyes. He has done this so many times, and everybody knows it. He's maybe the one leader you don't want to give any opportunities to. He's seen it in the past how he can turn games around. He is dialed in, you can definitely tell that. Six, six round gap here and um, 21st round coming up. No AWPs in play so far in the second half. That's a little bit interesting. Haven't had the chance yet. Haven't had the money for it. Not wanting to invest into that weapon too soon is SK Gaming. Tough weapon to make use on the T side as well. Pretty standard from both teams to open this round. To pop flash over. The Molotovs are going to prevent anyone from SK from peeking down Banana. But Claw 9, a lot more hesitant to apply pressure to take fights to probe into these bomb sites. There's a fun Molotov there from the CT side. Maybe if they had thrown more grenades to the corner, it could have forced someone into it. Regardless, 50 seconds on the clock and. Bomb is still all the way back there. Someone surely is going to have to go and pick it up right now, just trying for a bit of mid-control. Swiftly denied. Might be a good chance for them to go get the bomb. They might actually appreciate that at the end of the day. It looked like they were on the verge of just forgetting it even existed. They're going to fall all the way back now. That Molotov kind of scared him away from any kind of presence towards the A bomb site. It's all on this. This is the right time as well. They found oh, no. it. Fallen is rotating away. He's going to get called back at the correct moment, though. His teammates have information. Here comes the hit again. Fur boosted up. One player's blind. He's brought down to half HP. He's got to live. Fallen is still locked out of this fight. Now all he can do is fight. And he does go down. There's the entry so sorely needed. 12 seconds here. Automatic. With a really big hit, taking down Taco. The bomb has been planted. And SK, can they actually retake this one? It's now a three on three as Phelps take the kill. They're hesitating just a little bit. They need more right now. They have to win this round. And Rush is going to be going down. Phelps on the site with a quick double kill. 
And there's Stewie getting another one. Smoke is finally gone, so they can try and make their way on. Not that much time left now. SK Gaming, they desperately need this, but they're hesitating just a bit. Automatic with the kill, and that leaves Stewie in the corner. 41 health on Cold Zero, and he's down! Stewie shutting them out of the round. And you said it's an art of your own to not feel the pressure of this situation. Stewie is able to do it. You can see Rush there very quickly on his monitor, counting the amount of rounds they want, trying to do the quick math in his head of how much money they'll have, what they can bring into the next one. Incredible clutch, almost slipped away from them. And Stewie's gonna get a triple, or a double kill, excuse me, to end it. Yeah, it was automatic against Stewie, that combo. It's, it, it has always been lethal. It, remember, it brought this team to their first international title at the ESL Pro League Finals in Sao Paulo. Yes. The first major title of a North American team, I think that was in nine or 10 years, something incredible. And as the panel were discussing, SK obviously wanted revenge here today for that one. That seems like it's some distance away right now. Cloud9 are doubling the round score of SK Gaming. And even worse, they're running out of money. We've got the AWP on Fallen. That in itself is dangerous. It's all on this buy for SK Gaming. They've got nothing after this. They don't win this round. They're all going to be sitting at around $2,000 and having to fight for tournament life. Cloud9 on the verge of making it to the grand finals. Four players coming up alt mid, a really consolidated attack force. Focusing on trading, not wanting to spread out and get picked off. Here's what this AWV might allow SK to do. If Fallen is going to take a position at the top of Banana, once that smoke clears, if he starts peering down, he'll probably wait for a pop flash from his teammate. Keeping that control for a very long time right now. It's going to allow the three-man stack on eight to, to sort of stay where it is. Even Fallen now swapping out. Doesn't want to stick around, so making it kind of hard. If anyone heard the AWP on that side, they, they might get caught. Yeah, little tricky mind games. Unfortunately, there was no one over there to hear it. They might just run into it anyways, though. So we'll see what's going to happen. Smoke, in his view, waiting for the sound of pop flashes before he fires off a random shot. Actually, he's going to rotate back. Here's the bomb site hit. Oh, they're all stuck on the bomb side. This is not good for SK Gaming. You don't want to be this group. Dump Cloud9 are right on top. Cold Zero. He's going to go down, fall into the back line. Point blank range with the AWP, he gets dropped and now alone in the smoke. Taco waiting for backup, comes charging in, but Tarek will take him down. Now Fur and Phelps, they're rushing in one at a time. There's no coordination, Phelps just trying to be the hero. Skadoodle will drop him and now, what can Fur possibly do? He needed somebody else to stay alive and that just hasn't happened. The Molotov, he's gonna challenge it, but Skadoodle, the hero, Danny's here for the triple. And 50 rounds now for Cloud9. It's map and grand final point for Cloud9. It must be one hell of a comeback for SK and look at what they have to start it with. Almost nothing. Bob Knight has had to fight their way to this position. Led by Tarek, who's had a stellar game here on Inferno. Send them home. The crowd is ready. We are at the flashpoint here at the Aganas Arena. 15 to 7. SK Gaming need. Eight straight rounds in a row to make it back into overtime. You say it like that, very hard to believe that can happen. And look at the equipment, Moses. It's almost nothing, isn't it? These are gonna have to be, they have one smoke, they've got a Molotov and some flashbangs. What can you do here when these smokes clear? Stewie's gonna have a lot of time if he chooses to, to just peek into that bomb site, see what happens. It's gonna be refreshed. That's the last one they have. Trying to catch a player rotating behind that smoke. Keeping two players at B. Three players armed with pistols and one UMP. Can they hold off any hit towards this A site? Cold knows he has to remain somewhat aggressive to have information. That's the advantage they need is of what's coming. They're gonna have 
Almost no delay between having that information and it being too late. 25 seconds here. The clock is almost out and Cloud9 cool. keeping it right here as Cole picks up two. Well, one great kill. Phelps with the other one. There's a headshot. 17 seconds as they pick up the bomb. They're going to be on the site. They're going to have to plant. 10 seconds here as the bomb goes down. And now it's two C set 75 to try and keep SK in the semi finals here. Cloud9, they're so close to an absolutely historic victory. Skardoodle hiding in the corner. Oh, what a shot coming up from Fur, making it a little bit more possible. He's only got the one kill and they're getting ever closer. They don't have a kit. They're almost out of time. They've got to go much faster than this. They need to move. Skardoodle getting a missed shot here and he's finally going to get run over. Everybody's holding their breath right now. Even without the kid, it's gonna get real close and he's gonna have it just in the last second. SK Gaming holding tight. That was so close. It's, it's all cold zero with that advanced positioning towards lane. Huge kills, huge damage done. One towards Rapside. Tarek was there on his own. And it's still okay at this point for Cloud9. It's that missed fight from Rush. The pop flash came in, it didn't affect his opponent, but he loses the duel with the Galil. That's what puts Skadoodle in such a tough position. They still, trading in that round is okay because they're only going up against pistols. They've got to fight for one more round. They're bringing only pistols into this one. One smoke, one flashbang. What a reversal. SK's arsenal, they have an AWP, they've got an AK, they've got three M4s, there's the pop flash up through it. Phelps is completely blind, but so is Stewie. He couldn't press the attack, jumping across, trying to hope his teammates can do it. They're gonna press on to him even more, swinging out wide, there's the trade. M4 in Russia's hands. So they've at least that got a weapon to play with. And quite a bit of time here. RSK gonna lose their patience and try and peek anywhere. It seems like they're setting up for some pretty deep defense here. Down in that pit, Cold Sierra can spot anyone trying to fall back. So right now, Cloud9 is just sort of locked in. The only one who isn't in this box right now is Automatic. They're hoping, I mean, SK did the same thing in the first half when they had control of CT spawn. They're hoping someone makes an awkward rotation. Someone wanders right into them, trying to get information of where Cloud9 is going, but it's not being given away. SK is playing this very, very well. Utility up in a palace is going to allow Taco to clear out towards Rapside. He sees absolutely nothing. Those will be there eventually. Cloud9 is just waiting for Automatic to get into position. Flashbang there, buying a bit more time once again. Automatic's role is to occupy Taco while the rest of his team gets into the bomb site. He wants to stay alive as long as possible. Oh, he's going to come running right in, almost taking him down. That could have very well just been it. 15 seconds on the clock and Taco's very low, but Cold Sierra covering from the right hand side and taking down Rush. The bomb has been planted, but they've got the advantage. Another headshot comes in. Cold Sierra's really come alive in this game now. And Skadoodle's gonna go down. Another triple kill. And SK Gaming alive a little bit longer for the ninth round here on the board. You can see the danger though. If Automatic gets that kill on a Taco and is able to get into pit, that's such a strong position to have in the post plant. Not able to do it in Cold Zera takes out Rush with the M4, that's the major point of danger, and then he keeps his eye on it. He knows someone's gonna make the run to try and pick that up, and it's Tarek who gets dropped next. Nine to 15 now. Brief time out there. The chance are back. Cold Zero and Fallen with a double AWP. If anything was going to bring them into overtime, that is, that's a good ticket right there. Oh, oh. my God, what? Goodbye, Tarek. Instantly down through the wall. Headshot to the right through, I mean. What can you even do about that? Now the flashbang comes out, but they do rush down Fallen. That's going to be a lot of trouble as Fur gets down as well. Cloud9 answering back twice as hard. Taking oh! down Phelps. Automatic with the kill. And just like that, Cloud9 in a one versus four. Taco can't do anything. The pandemonium is 16 rounds. And Cloud9 are in the grand finals of a major tournament.